What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the AJ Speed Shop YouTube channel. Today we're gonna be doing some diagnostics on my 1987 Buick Grand National second fuel pump control. And uh, what I mean by that is I have two fuel pumps in this car and the primary fuel pump runs on the stock ECU control strategy. The second fuel pump I have is also controlled by my ECU and it's on a high output circuit and it's got some parameters that have to be met in order to turn that fuel pump on. I've ran this setup like this for two years. It's worked great. It's, it's, I've had no issues with it up until just a few months ago that for some reason my second fuel pump was staying on all the time. Now that control circuit is a ground activated circuit. So it's the ECU sends a ground out to the second fuel pump relay and tells that fuel pump to come on when certain parameters are met. But for some reason, mine is staying on all the time. So for the last month or so, I didn't trust it. So I unplugged that circuit. I ran a jumper plug on it and I've just been running both fuel pumps all the time. There's no issue with doing that, particularly on the 885 because it drinks so much fuel anyway. Uh, but I have some road trips coming up and I have, uh, I'm gonna be running on 93 octane. So trying to idle 160 pound injectors on a small V6 engine uh, on 93 octane is, is tough enough. But especially with two fuel pumps running all the time, it's not going to be feasible. So uh, today we're going to go through some diagnostic checks using my DDEFI dash. I'm going to show you how to navigate through Tuner Studio using the dash itself. Um, so we'll be able to test this fuel pump circuit and not need to use a laptop. So let's hop in the car and go through a couple tests. I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, guys, we're in the car. got the dash powered up. And I'm going to show you how to navigate through Tuner Studio to show you some of the diagnostic checks that we need to use to test this fuel pump circuit out. So right now we're on the home screen. We're gonna go ahead and escape out of this. And for this, I'm gonna be using my mini keyboard and mini mouse here. Got out of the home screen. Gonna be going over here to our IO test tabs. This is output test mode for IO. All right, so we see it right here and you can see the fuel pressure indication right here, which is showing 25. That's just the static pressure while the line is pressured up. So our first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to the primary fuel pump and turn on the primary pump because the second pump will not run if the first pump is not on. So we're gonna enable test mode. That makes the test system live. And I'm gonna click this primary pump on and you're gonna hear it come on and you'll probably see it change on the fuel pressure gauge. Okay, so now you see right here, our fuel pressure is up to 40. That's off the primary pump. Now let me kick on the secondary pump, which is tied into high output channel three. Watch that fuel pressure indication. All right, so it kicked up. So the pump was off, the pump was not on, the second pump was not on. Let me cycle it off. Okay, second pump off, 40 pounds. Second pump on, 43 pounds. So as of right now, the system is working how it's supposed to through the test. So I'm gonna turn this pump off. We're gonna disable test mode and we're gonna to go to look at the control strategy on that high output circuit. Because that is exactly how it's supposed to be working. That is not how it has been working. For some reason that pump was staying on all the time. Let's see, programmable outputs. Okay, and you see the one right here with the green dot, that's high output three. That is my fuel pump circuit. Okay, so what this is saying here, let me zoom in so you guys can see it clearly. What this is saying here is there's two conditions that have to be met in order for the ECU to send the ground signal to the fuel pump relays to tell the pump to come on. It's based on MAP, which is your intake pressure, and also your RPM. 
So on your map, it requires 200 kPa. So that's positive pressure. That's probably, you know, 10 pounds of boost or somewhere around that lot, uh, those range. Uh, and it also, uh, it also requires RPM, which mine is set at 3,500. So by this setup here, the ECU has to see 200 kPa and 3,500 RPMs. Both of those parameters have to be met in order to trigger the second fuel pump to come on. And it looks like it is set up right. So everything should be working as normal and it used to, but most recently it has not been. And I thought maybe I had a wire problem. I thought maybe the, tr the ground wire or the trigger, the circuit wire from the ECU to the relay was possibly grounded out somewhere, maybe going through the firewall or something like that. But I checked it and it is not. So as of now, everything looks like it's set up correctly, which is really weird. I'm not sure that I, not sure that I trust that. All right, I'm gonna set the dash back up, back to normal, and let's start it up and see what it's idling at. If it is really just on one fuel pump when it's running, I should have about 32 or 33 pounds of fuel pressure on this on this uh, dash indication. Showing about 32 to 33 on that one. My fuel pressure gauge, which you guys might not be able to see because of the uh, shutter speed, is showing 29, which is normal. I usually see about 29 on that gauge and roughly 32 to 33 on the dash. It's two separate pressure uh, sensors, one for each uh, circuit. I have some redundant um, sensors on here just to cross check these things. But as of now, it looks like everything is right. So if I was, if I was to go out and drive the car right now, we should be driving around on one fuel pump. And then the second fuel pump should kick on once the ECU sees 200 kPa and 3,500 RPMs. I'll be watching that like a hawk because last time when this system didn't work properly, it did at least trigger both pumps to stay on all the time, which is better than not having a second pump to come on at all. You know, that's gonna lead to a meltdown, but uh, I don't trust it. If it's doing glitchy stuff, I don't trust it. So I usually put the jumper plug in and just force both pumps to run all the time. But, uh, like I said, with the upcoming road trips that are uh, gonna be coming up, I need to uh, be able to run a single fuel pump for 93 octane. So um, the weather's pretty bad here right now, so I'm not gonna be able to get out and test this today, but maybe tomorrow I will, and I will try to add that to the video if at all possible. So in the meantime, I'm gonna check a couple things under the hood and make sure everything seems okay and I will check back with you as soon as I get a good update. Uh, hopefully this helps some of you guys out that are trying to use an ECU GN uh, to control your secondary fuel pump. And also it helps some of you guys that are using the DDEFI dash um, to see how to navigate through Tuner Studio using the dash. It's really cool, it's really helpful, especially when you're out on the road and you don't have your laptop with you. So once again, thanks for checking in my channel and watching my videos. I appreciate all the awesome feedback I've been getting over my last four or five videos. So please stay tuned for more content. And if you like this video, please click the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you so much for stopping in. I'll talk to you soon.